Hello everyone, my name is Rumat and today I'm going to present you 3 Pantheon tricks that will help you gain ELO in League of Legends. There will be also two smaller tips towards the end, but you probably will know this already. So, starting right here, the first tip and the third tip will be about Pantheon E. Well, this uh, spell actually blocks all damage from target direction, right? So you use it and you block all the damage from that direction. What most people don't actually know is that you can actually block damage from very long range stuff and by that I mean a lot of things and all you have to do is actually know the location of the enemy so let's just say you know the guy is in base right so you can just eat towards that and you will block all damage from that direction now what what how can we use this actually well for starters you can use for example to block a fizz alt let's say fizz this is a fizz okay he ults you and well, he wants to engage on you, but if you use E right towards that direction, his ultimate will be useless. He has to actually get behind you when you're using E so that his ult will do damage. Let's think Z now. If he ults on you, if a Z ults on you, he'll have to come beside, be, uh, before your E, so he has to be behind you when the ultimate, his ultimate pops. So he ults you and he has to get somewhere out of your E range, because if you E towards him exactly when his ult explodes on you, he won't deal any damage. So you got Z, you got Fizz. Well, let's go a little bit, uh, let's enlarge this, let's think on globals well artillery mages if the velcos ults you you can just e if the xerath is here and ults you and you're here right you can just e in that direction he will not damage you if ziggs ults the same way he will not damage you if you are in that direction same goes for champions like ezreal ash draven jinx and there are some other interesting cases that might some people might not think about them well uh let's say a pike ults you. Well, if you do that, he's going to have his damage denied if you're doing towards him. And denying a pike ult in a ranked game can be decisive in some cases. Some cases, sorry. Uh, besides that, we also have some other interesting cases. Let's say Kartus. Well, let's say Kartus is right here, and you know he's here because he was almost ganked by your jungler or something. If he ults you and you do E in that direction where he is, you will actually block all the damage from him. It states clearly here that Pantheon will become immune to damage from that direction. And Kartus ult actually, when he casts it, he kind of <laughs> casts it in a line towards you, right? Uh, it's not that that path is invisible, but if you use E, you'll actually block damage. Now, there are also some cases which I'm not completely sure because I never tried it and never found it, found players to test this with, but I think you can also block Gangplank damage from his ult. If he ults you right here and you want to get out of the circle without dying, his ult circle and he's here, you can actually block damage from that. I think, I'm pretty sure you can actually block damage from Timo's Shrooms and Shaco clones if you point your E towards them. And let me look over the list if I forgot something. Nah, I think this is it. Uh, this is the first tip. These are, are all the champions that are kind of different. Obviously, you should use your E to block the vast majority of the burst that comes toward you whenever you feel it. But if the Fizz tries to engage in you, I've won ranked games because Fizz threw their ult in me. And then I just e when their team engaged and they were like, why did that not deal damage? And in lower elos, you'd expect that. You're, it's not pretty clear. Kartus might not know if he ults you from that point that you will live. Let's just say you're even here. Here, doesn't matter. Just be towards him and you will actually block it. It has no range, no circle around it, as you can see. It's just, this is the, this is the zone in which you block, okay? So it creates, I think, a ratio towards this zone where you will block damage. I don't know if this extends, like, globally. I don't know exactly how that works, but it should. If this tells you right, it should. So that's the first tip that I wanted you to know, and it actually it's actually a pretty strong one, so follow it, try to understand it, in some cases it will may save your life. Uh, and yeah, there are some tricky cases, the Fizz matchup for example, when he jumps on you with his E. I don't know how his E counts, because he's technically invulnerable, so you're not really hitting your E in that direction, because I'm not sure if he's on the map at that point, I'm not sure how the code works, but it's quite interesting to know. As the first tip, and uh, also the third tip will focus on its E, on the E, so 
we're going to do it now. I've seen a lot of high elo players, when they are actually farming waves or rides or anything, they are actually doing instant E and stop it instantly to proc the shield damage. So you use E once and then the shield, okay? I see a lot, when you want to clear waves, I see a lot of uh, high elo players that play Pantheon. I've looked over replays and whatever they do, let's say they, they farm a wave, okay? They use Q, then E and instantly stop it. So Q, E, instant stop it, deal the damage from the shield, okay? So, see that shield, how it goes away. So that's a way to actually push faster in some context if you don't need the E. If you need the E, don't use it. So most people don't really know this niche thing. It also deals damage, so you gotta focus on that. It's, it deals reduced damage to minions, but it's still useful for a fast push. It can save you seconds every game, and seconds in every game actually matter. The third tip that I'm not sure a lot of people know also, is that whenever you have a full bar, and let's just say there is... There are two champions that are chasing you, right? They want to murder you, you are low HP. And you want to actually escape towards this area for some reason, I don't know why. Let's just imagine this game. You can use your W and not auto attack it to get mini stunned by it. So if you, if you see this case, W is actually a dash that covers some distance pretty fast, right? So in order to jump, look, you jumped, and then you don't auto attack as this on W, Pantheon next three attacks. So when you click actually on this, when you click on this, it will do the three attacks. If you let it do, if you cast W, if it even states that you, if you look on Wikipedia, it's not it's not stating that here, but it will automatically attack the target. But you can actually trick it whenever you want to escape. You can hit W and then immediately click away. So you actually don't do that, and you can see you can do it later if you want to. So these are my main three tips for Pantheon, sorry, I hope you really make use of them. Also two more smaller tips uh, if uh, you want. Right here, uh, whenever I gank bot actually, I take two things in consideration. One thing, if I ult, my bar will always be full. So it says right here down below, Grand Starfall instantly reduces mortal wheels. So your passive will always be for uh, five stacks to deal an empowered W, an empowered Q, an empowered D. So whenever you ult, your bar will stack immediately, but this is a small tip that you knew. But the second small tip that I want to actually say in most of my games, in most of my ranked games, every time I roam, besides the fact that some good mid laners in higher elos will work here to know rather you go this way or this way, if they don't, well, you can just pretend to go back, get out of vision, or pretend to go this way and then move towards like this to roam bot without them seeing you. In most games, I actually ping right when I make the decision to roam. So right here, I push the wave, I back off to get out of vision, I'm like, I'm like, like this, I'm like starting to do this, even if I'm not casting, look at the range of this, you, you get this range till here, but I, you start the pings much earlier, even though, even though the ult automatically pings for you, it's simpler to actually just ping three or four times before you actually go. So, whenever I decide where to gank, I'm like, if I want to gank, this is a harder thing to actually remember. If you want to gank top, you can actually bait a bit to make them think like you go bot and then go like this if they don't work here. Good midlanders work here and you'll see that. And then bam, spam pings or even faster than this. So your champion that's here, your teammate, knows to actually start to prepare the gank. If you ever have a support that's actually having lots of CC, a Rakan, or Thresh, with a flash up, they know to engage a Leona, now it is anything. They know to actually cast their spells so that they wait you. And this works better in lower elos if you time it right. In higher elos you can start pinging the moment you actually want to do the decision of roaming because they know when you're about to ult but in lower elos so like this is high elo game right okay so enemy doesn't have word here i pretend that i'm going top whatever i'm going this they don't have a word around here because i might know i might not know but in higher elo i can start pinging that i'm going from this point from this area so like i'm like ping 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 and then i'm i'm moving ping ping and alt right in lower elos what you want to do, because uh, on this account I started in unranked, because I want to do my unranked master. In lower elos, I've noticed that you actually have to ping your going, especially when you're ulting. Because, like, you ping now, okay? This is what you do in lower elos. Because if you don't 
ping, they might not react, and if you ping too fast, they might react too fast, because they are they're, they're think too fast in that terms, they are like, oh my god, it's coming. They don't have that macro awareness in higher, in lower elos that you expect. So yeah, this is the main tips. I believe there are five tips, tricks, whatever you want to call them, and this is how I generally play Pantheon. I find lots of success right now with him, so I believe Pantheon mid or top with Ignite, and, uh, and uh, build that I'm playing Yumus into Boots into Black Cleaver, and that that's dance is probably one of the strongest builds for him or GGA or you know I believe this is a very free elo champion if you practice it a bit especially since the meta is against Katarina, Zed, Echo and Talon and Zoe if you're not against a Syndra Vegar you're going to be decent or angry or good these champions must be good these players must be good on the champions but you can counter lots of annoying matchups such as Fizz such as Katarina such as Diana, if you are making the right plays and right calls, you can have a good time. Especially, don't pick it in case you don't really have an AP champion, because you're going to make your game harder, but it's a loss that cannot matter that much if you're winning the early game. This is my tips for Pantheon, I really hope you enjoyed them, and see you next time, guys. Goodbye.